First up is no. Rick, and he's actually standing on a custom-made scale. Rick. Oh my gosh. What is up, everybody? My name is Dr. Woods, Dr. Andrew Woods. Um, you can just call me Andrew. This is my cat, Ty. Super cute, he hates it here. <laughs> I'm in danger. And today, I'm going to be reacting to the top viral animal videos. Uh-oh, stinky. Because I'm a veterinarian, and animals are fun, obviously. So let's just jump right into it, and he's gonna jump right out of my lap. Hold up, something ain't right here. Is that what you want? Is that better? Am I Dr. Mike yet? Okay, I am not Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike is perfect, and I have flaws. And so, girl. so the first video is by Mark Rober, the NASA engineer, and he made a video, a viral video, about squirrels. <laughs> Let's just jump right into it, all right, guys? This is a bird feeder, and everything to my left is my attempt at making it squirrel proof. If they want the bird seed, they will first need to pass through what is big. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. If he wants to make it squirrel proof, why don't you just build a bird feeder that's super tall, like I'm talking skyscraper. Okay, maybe not that tall, but tall enough so a squirrel can't jump to it, and then slick it up with some kind of, some kind of oil. <laughs> that way, it's too high for them to jump and they can't crawl up it. Anyway, let's get back to it. Art Ninja Warrior Obstacle Course for Squirrels. This course is extremely challenging. Okay, how does he think of this? This man is a genius. Here's where I've placed their I mean, favorite bird feeder at the end of the course. And to sweeten the deal, right below that, there's a trap door. And if they step here, it releases a butt ton of walnuts and unfurls some celebratory banners. Why walnuts? There. I'm glad you asked. Walnuts. I'm using walnuts because over the course walnuts. of a week, I put out a buffet of seven different nuts and seeds. And all four times I repeated the experiment, walnuts were always the one they ate this first. This man thinks of everything. The sixth challenge is called the tourist trap. It's actually a bit of a reward for making it this far. If the squirrel sticks their head through this board my wife painted, it's just a photo op they can hang on the wall of their tiny squirrel nest. I'll place a walnut here as an incentive for them not to miss this unique opportunity. The placing penultimate challenge are the quad incentive. steps of great elevation. Okay guys, L let me break that down. He's placing a walnut as an incentive. Now the whole theory of all of this, of, of uh, and the whole reason he's getting this whole thing to work is because of a concept called positive reinforcement. That is a style of learning. It's actually a style of learning that I recommend whenever you're trying to teach your pet to do anything, whether that be going outside, using the bathroom, using the litter box, to sit, to stand, to do any command or trick or, or anything you really want them to do. Always try to teach them with positive reinforcement. And basically what that means is um, after they do a certain action, you positively, you, you positively reinforce that with a treat. Pets and uh, most animals are pretty food motivated. So if they do a if they do an action you want them to do, you can treat positive reinforcement. Um, and it pretty much works with all pets. If you can teach cats to do this, with positive reinforcement, you can really do literally anything. And that's the only reason he's getting squirrels to go across a whole freaking, freaking ninja world Ooh. warrior maze is because of positive reinforcement. They want the nuts, guys. That is the reward at the end, positive reinforcement. There are a total of four yeah. competitors that will be attempting the course. First up is no. Rick, and he weighs 500 grams. I know this because he's actually standing he on a custom-made scale. Rick is very clever, as you'll see here in a minute, he but he also gets spooked easily. Next up is Marty. He's basically indistinguishable from Rick. He knows Rick and Marty behavior? are inseparable and pretty much spend all their time together as a pair. Dude, Our third contender is Frank, engineer? also coming in around 500 grams. He's very gutsy. He's also kind of dumb. Man, Finally, man. we've got my personal favorite, Fat Gus. He's just really charming and will strike a pose if he sees a camera. <laughs> he also really likes Bruh. to eat and he tips the scales at an impressive 800 grams. That boy, oh, Rick! Successfully leaping away, Fat Gus just goes for it, I'm hands crying. free. Now back to the home wrecker. You can see Rick is instinctively suspicious of this gold digger and only for a brief moment puts his full weight on the platform. I told you he was smart. His buddy Marty, on the other hand. Yo, Marty's a sip. <laughs> okay, so. So that would be an example of negative reinforcement. So unlike positive reinforcement, the stimulus isn't positive, it's negative. So the action of standing on the plate, instead of uh, eliciting a positive response of getting something like a treat, uh, it, it's, uh, it activates a negative response, basically falling, startling the squirrel, and it's gonna make the squirrel less likely to do that specific thing. So I doubt the squirrel is probably not gonna fall from that again because of negative reinforcement. Uh, and uh, a lot of people will sometimes try to train their pets with negative reinforcement, and it will work in certain circumstances, but I definitely don't recommend it because 
um, you, you get this negative reaction from pets and it can cause negative emotions and feelings and, and kind of lessen the, the human animal connection, if you will. Um, so definitely, definitely don't train using negative reinforcement. Definitely don't uh, rub your pet's face and their accent at home or um, hit them when they do something wrong. Instead, maybe let's be positive and use positive reinforcement by training them with things like treats and stuff like that. So um, let's see if the squirrel falls for it again. And because I know my wife is going to yeah. ask me, no, this will not hurt the squirrel for two reasons. Number one, yeah, they fun. are amazing like Those cats are and always land on their feet. In fact, squirrels are one of the few mammals that can survive a fall from any height because they make their terminal velocity so low. You can see it right here. They make their body as flat as possible, then put their tail back to increase drag. They basically become their own parachute. But just like all the other obstacles so far, after a day or two, they'd mastered it. Yeah. In this case, even disregarding her See, offering they of get reinforcement. Fall. They're not going for that. They know it's going to keep falling. So here's a single camera shot of a full run, and by the end, all of them could do the full course in less than 40 seconds. And while we're watching, you might be wondering what happened to the squirrel put. Now what you're about to see is gonna look pretty chaotic, but when we check the slow-mo, amazingly, I'll show you how the squirrel is totally in control pretty much the whole time. All right, now here's a second angle. What's crazy is the time it takes him to do all the predictive math to know exactly where he will land and to lock his head is 300 milliseconds. That's exactly this long, literally less than the blink of an eye. That blows my mind, but if you think about it, it makes sense these reactions would have evolved to be razor sharp if you live your life in the trees, constantly making split second decisions. My buddy Destin from Smarter Every Day also made a video analyzing how cats always land on their feet and they do the exact same two tricks, the head target lock and bringing lens in to rope Okay, Mark, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. That whole myth, cats always land on their two feet. In general, that's true. However, that doesn't always happen. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get something real quick. This is my squishy boy. Now, it's true. If you drop them, they're typically gonna do the same thing as Mark is showing. They're gonna... You see that? You see how he turned? He was ready. However, that doesn't always happen. Especially when cats get older, they can sometimes lose their balance and sense of direction and things like that. Um, I've totally seen cats with with broken arms, broken feet, um, dislocations in their elbows and knees and things like that from, from jumping high distances. And sure, they landed on their feet, but let's be honest, cats are not squirrels. They're heavier. They don't have that webbing between their arms that's gonna, you know, help soften the blow and, and help reduce or, in, or not reduce, help, uh, help increase drag resistance on the way down. Um, so definitely don't drop your cat from high heights. It may or may not make up. I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Be kind to your squishy. Don't drop them. Be kind to your kitty. Don't drop them off a high cliffy. That was amazing, Mark. A1 content. Keep it up. Let's keep the animal videos coming. Okay, our next video is how to pick up a cat like a pro. Vet advice. On I'm cat in danger. By the lovely, helpful Vancouver vet. Sounds wholesome. Let's see what it's about. Hi, my name is Dr. Yuri Burstyn. Dr. I'm a Burstyn. I'm veterinarian in Vancouver, BC, and I'd like to welcome you up, to a series of practical skills up, for pet owners. I'm just gonna talk about how to approach and handle a cat. You know, when I'm in clinics, I often see people walking around swinging their cat like this, <laughs> and it really just kind of makes me cringe because that's not comfortable for the cat. Yo, or he is cringing. Safe, to be honest Same, with you. Honestly. So I just want to kind of go over a little bit how to pick up a cat and different ways of managing them, just to make your life a little bit easier. Also, that way you'll be safe because what happens when you have a cat swing free in the air is they'll often start to scramble for purchase. Though, especially with their hind legs, they can do quite a bit of damage. I mean, and I've been scratched quite badly on my forearms. Absolutely. Let me let me show you guys. If I hold him out like this, he doesn't like it. Okay, well now he's being really chill. Come on, Ash, Ash for them. So typically, like you said, yeah, if you're just holding him out like this, they don't have any support. Like this is barely any support. Even though Ash is super chill, most cats are not like this. They're gonna be scrambling, trying to daddy. find some way out, but he's been conditioned to take all of my abuse. I love you so much, Ash. Thank you. Aww. So what's the good way to handle? Let's, uh, how should I pick up a cat? Please tell me. So just nice and supported, hold them up. And then if I need to carry a cat around, I usually just hold them close to my body. And again, I'm just squishing them. I'm doing squishing it. Squishing them into myself. <laughs> again, yeah, pretty much. Claudia feels nice and squishing supported. In. I'll put my hand supported? out here for her, put her paws down. Then you you know, I can carry her around quite safely. Do you feel like supported? <laughs> and, and she will want to Yeah. Sit. Yeah, you're supportive. Um, now, if we Good do job. have a cat job, who's Ash. trying to get away from us, he's right. This is, this is how you do it. Squish that cat. 
Squish it. Trying to hold a cat down, whether it's oh. to trim their nails or to give them a pill. I or agree. Or whether you just want to have a cat not run off for a moment. I agree. You need to squish Squish them. that cat. Squish, All squish, you need squish, to know squish, about squish. cat restraint. Squish! Cat hair. Um, I, I will say, if I could add anything to that, it would be when you're approaching a cat, um, there's a couple of signs you can look out for to make you think that maybe I shouldn't be approaching this cat. Let me get a cat and I'll explain. Okay, we're back with Ty. So, one sign, one clear giveaway that this cat does not want to be here and doesn't want to interact with you and doesn't want you to touch it is if his ears are back like that and he's staring at you with eyes wide open. Don't approach the cat. Let it be. He doesn't want to interact with you for whatever reason. Probably not the smartest idea. But other than that, this dude's giving great advice. I really enjoyed it. I 100% agree. Hold your cat. Love your cat. Squish your cat if necessary. That was super fun, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, Hold up, bro. I got one more video for you to watch. Oh, okay. Please don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. Thank you. Okay, there's a lot to break down here. Um, I think this is a part of the video I'm probably gonna get a little bit more serious. So this lady, Amy Cooper, was in a New York park, New York City park, and um, the gentleman um, who's filming is a black guy, um, an avid bird watcher uh, in the park, and he noticed that Amy Cooper's dog was off the leash when it says in the park that all dogs need to be on a leash so he says hey you know you should probably put your dog on a leash um and then apparently he gave the he tried to give the dog some treats um but uh i guess the lady got threatened as you can clearly see here and so he started recording as rightfully so now when i first watched this video um i think immediately the first thing that jumps out to you um, or the least the most visible thing to me as a veterinarian, I could say, with my own biases. Uh, the first thing I noticed is obviously your very, very poor treatment of the dog. Um, the dog is clearly getting choked by that collar. Um, the dog is showing visible signs of discomfort at one point. The dog is standing up and she's choking at other points. The dog is on the ground coughing and, and, and panting. And um, likely the dog did suffer some sort of tracheal damage, whether that be some bruising or something like that. Um, likely the dog may have needed some sort of anti-inflammatory uh, to kind of reduce inflammation on that trachea. Um, we do know uh, later that she did give up the dog after this video was recorded and she's since been um, since been fired from her job apparently and things like that. Um, but uh, again when I see that video um, I think a lot of people, a lot of white people are quick to judge um, how horrible she's mistreating that, that, that dog. And I, I don't want to make this a bash on Amy Cooper video at all, uh, but when I look at this video as a white person, again, the first time, I, the first thing I see is, is how horribly she's treating this dog. But I don't think that's what's important here at all. Um, yes, you shouldn't abuse animals. That uh, I'm totally d dis disowning that. But um, the clear overt racism that was on display here um, is really what I think we should be what we should be focused on. Um, as a white person, um, I, again, with all the things going on in the U.S. right now, all of the, all of the protesting, and and um, you, um, you have to have seen the George Floyd thing. So while this dog definitely did make it, unfortunately, George Floyd was suffocated to death. He did not make it um, at the hands of a white man, a white police officer. 
Um, so I think what's important here is that as a white creator, um, the bare minimum I can do is get on this platform and say how, you know, Black Lives Matter, we really need to end systemic racism. We need to stand up and speak out against racism as, as, as white people, if you're watching this and you're white. Um, obviously, I'm not black. I don't understand how black people feel, what they're going through, but um, I do stand with, um, with black, black Lives Matter. And um, I'm going to be including some links down below about where you can donate to, but um, I think as a, as a white person, I encourage all other white people who are watching my platform to, to speak out against racism, number one, to um, help mobilize, organize, and figure out ways to vote out racist officials in office in America. Um, that way we can actually get some sort of change, and obviously we definitely need some police reform, but... Um, I thought it was, uh, I think it's my duty as someone who has follow, any number of followers to speak out against racism and I'll definitely be donating to the cause, but uh, that's kind of all I really had to say on this video. I know it definitely took a turn, but um, this is an issue that is going on in America and um, I think every, everyone needs to, all white people need to have a wake up call and, and say, hey, this is 2020 and we're still having overt racism and, and, and things like that and it needs to stop, so definitely protest. Um, donate to the cause and speak out against racism. And I don't think I mentioned this, this is my other cat Ash, you've probably seen him around in my videos, but um, be nice to your kitties, be nice to your fellow Americans and each other, and Black Lives Matter, guys. See you guys next time. Peace. Say bye, Ash. Ash says bye. Say bye, girl. Say bye, Ash. Okay. We out.